I normally read about four books and then I will do like a week, not a weekly. <laughs> Where's, it's not even like 30 seconds in. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's Katie and welcome back or welcome to my channel if you are new. Today's video is all about my recent reads. Um, so for those of you who are new and don't quite know how I go about doing this, so I will normally read about four books and then do like a recent reads or like a reading wrap up and tell you guys what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, my rating, things like that. I don't do any spoilers so you don't have to worry about that. But if you're also new to my channel, I also do a book spotlight at the beginning of every video. So if you don't want to see the book spotlight, I will put the timestamp here so you can go ahead and get to the recent reads portion. But the spotlight today is one of my favorite books from last year that I read and it's I love it. So I have to share it with you guys. Lovely War by Julie Berry. This book, I was not a fan of historical romance, historical fiction. I just didn't, I was never a fan of it. And I'm like, uh, I don't, I'm not going to like it. But this book changed my mind. Whew. This book mixes two things that I love. Love and mythology. Okay. <laughs> this book is narrated by none other than the Greek gods and goddesses, Aphrodite, Hades, Apollo? Can't remember the other ones. It doesn't matter because Aphrodite is the best, and that's the only one I cared about. Excuse me. What? Stop. <sighs> okay, fine, fine. I'm cool. I'm fine. Um, but they narrate the story of these two couples who fall in love right before World War One, and it spans World War One and World War Two, and it's just so good. Like if you're just looking for a good, wholesome romance, historical romance. Pick this up. I absolutely loved it. I have a review on it on my channel. I will link it up here for you guys. Just do yourself a favor, pick this up because it really is so good. Now let's get to my recent reads. Oh, and for those of you who do not know about how I rate my books, if you're new, the rating system is here. I do five, four, and three. Five are my absolute favorite books. I would reread them in a heartbeat. Four, Books are okay, they're good. I probably won't reread them. And three are just like my, uh. So I guess like my uh, rating is equivalent to like someone's rating of like my fives or their fives. My four would be their three. And my three is someone's one, I guess, if you're gonna like go that way. So that's why, that's how I do mine. So the first book I'm gonna talk about, I had such high, high hopes. I have heard nothing but like great things about this author and I had never read one of his books so I was excited to read it. So I read Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I gave this a whole three stars. <laughs> Don't come at me. But uh, it's so... To me, it didn't live up to the hype that people put it around, and I was just disappointed in that. I was really looking forward to it being like this amazing read, and it just, just kind of fell flat for me. I loved his writing style. I love the way he writes his books. To me, the plot twist was just meh. <laughs> eh, sure. It was just, it was just like a okay, I, I guess but it just wasn't what I was hoping for the plot to, twist to be. So just a little bit about this book. Um, this book is about a girl named Jules and she's kind of just down on her luck. She lost her job, she lost her boyfriend, she caught him cheating on her. Um, so she's like, I need to move out of this place. I, I need to go, but she has no money. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> so she sees in the paper that the Bartholomew, which is like this world-renowned apartment building, hotel building in New York City is looking for um, sitters, apartment sitters. Um, and this is, this place is so world-renowned because it's supposedly haunted. And she had read a book about it 
growing up with her sister and there she's like I will get there one day well she goes to the the interview to be an apartment sitter and you know they ask her some questions like you know do you have any family do you have anyone close to you things like this and things like that and she doesn't because her parents had died and her sister went missing back when she was like uh her late teens so she's like now I you know I don't have any contacts anything like that um and they're like okay you know that we only have certain rules that you need to live by and that is no visitors no leaving the apartment at night no disturbing the other occupants you know don't go talking to people because you know just they don't want to talk to you low life no I don't know I, it's just like some weird things like that and she's like okay and she's like how much does it pay and they're like you stay here for three months you get 12 grand and she's like sign me up Thank you. In all honesty, I would do the same three months, 12 grand. I, but, um, so she gets moved in. She meets one of her neighbors and they kind of have a, like a connection. They start becoming friends and then her neighbor disappears. Doesn't know where she is. She just moves out in the middle of the night and everyone in the hotel, the hotel, is it a hotel? Is it an apartment? Eh, it's give or take. Everyone in the apartment building is like, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about her. She's just left in the middle of the night. You know, she was just a bad tenant. She just left. And she doesn't believe that because she's like, oh, I know she wouldn't do that. But I'm sitting there thinking, girl, you just met this girl. You just met this girl. And you're like, you feel, you sound like you've known her your whole life. You haven't. But okay, we'll go with it. So she starts investigating more and more of the apartment building and stuff that's happened to like the past tenants. And then it just kind of goes from there. And that's all I can say without spoiling it. Like I said, three stars. My first Riley Sager, I was a little disappointed. But yes, yeah, so this book, three. And I'm probably gonna get rid of it. Even though it's fully pink and I love pink, I just, I probably will not reread this one again. Uh, the next book that I read, I actually buddy read with a friend of mine on Bookstagram, whose also name is Katie. So, you know, we were book twinning. Katie, Katie, da, da, it was, it was great. Uh, but the book that we read is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. And I gave this book a four stars. Now, see, I had high hopes for this book as well because Riley Marie, if I really, really had to choose like what are my top, top favorites out of this list, this next one would probably be up there. And that is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. Make with books. The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter by Theodora Goss. You'll know if you watch my vlogs how much I love this book and this series. Katie Coulson. I've got to hop in, look at a wreck real quick because I just started listening to The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. They're all like, this is my favorite series. I love these books. They're amazing. So I'm like, I'm, I, you got me. I, I trust you. Don't steer me wrong. You haven't yet. And I guess I didn't with this book. It's not, it wasn't a five stars to me, but it was a four star. So I will give them that. I did enjoy this book. It just wasn't a five star. Like would I reread it? Probably not. But let me tell you a little bit about the book first. Um, this book follows Mary Jekyll, who is the daughter of Dr. Jekyll. Um, and her mother had just died. Dr. Jekyll is dead. So she's trying to get like their affairs in order, things like that. And she discovers that her mother has been sending money to like this convent type thing to take care of Hyde for like every month this is a little bit of money set aside to give to Hyde. So she goes to none other than Sherlock Holmes and Watson to discover what the heck is going on. Why is her mother sending this money? Yes, Sherlock Holmes and Watson are in this book. That's amazing. But she ends up going to the convent finding Diana Hyde, which turns out to be her sister. Catch my drift, Jekyll, hi. Yep, her sister. Um, and through that, she actually starts helping, um, Watson and Holmes with um, these gruesome murders that are happening in London. Is it London? I'm pretty sure it's Whitechapel, which I'm pretty sure is London, close to it, something like that. And so she helps, you know, them investigate the murders of what's going on. And while she's doing that, she discovers that her dad is, was involved in some, some stuff. Okay, just some 
just some stuff. And we learn through that stuff that all these scientists from like all these stories that you've heard of, of Frankenstein and like Dr. Moreau and some Dr. Re Rappuccini that I've never heard of, but apparently it's a short story that I have never heard of, all were experimenting on their daughters. So we meet the poison girl who is Beatrice Rappuccini, we meet the Catwoman who is Catherine Moreau, and we meet Frankenstein's uh, creation, Justine Frankenstein. And from there, they just try to figure out, you know, what's what the murder is, what's going on, how is that connected to what their fathers were doing to them. And they just create the, what is called the Athena Club. And um, it's such, it's so, it was really good. I enjoyed it, not five stars, but I still enjoyed it. And the best part of this book was the writing, okay? So the way this is written is Catherine Moreau is writing this book because she's an author and she wants to get their story out. Well, as she's writing what's happening in these scenes, you get interjections from all the other characters that are in the scene and they're like, hold on, that's not what I said or that's not what I would say or that's not how it went. And you just get these interjections here and there and which I loved. That's the best part of this book was the way that it was written. But yeah, this was real. This was a great read. I, I, I highly enjoyed this one. The next book that I read was none other than Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. This was my first Penelope Douglas and it was a five star. That was 10, but you get my drift. Uh, five star. I absolutely loved this book. Okay. It is a slow burn age gap. Uh, boyfriend's father trope except they were broken up so it's not like she was cheating it was so good it was so good and spicy it was spicy I was trying to think of like what could I do to like relay to you the level of spice that a book has that I read because I'm just like, it's spicy. So I came up with the Leo scale, okay? Because I'm a Leo fanatic, Leo DiCaprio all the way. So just listen to my tangent, just for a little bit as I tell you the Leo scale. We have level one, which is Leo from Growing Pains, okay? This book means it's sweet. It's a sweet book, probably no steaminess to it, but still sweet. We have then Leo in Catch Me If You Can, because he was really charming in this movie. He was charming. Maybe this book has like one or two cutesy scenes, but nothing, again, nothing spicy. We then go to Leo, we then go to Leo in Titanic, because Leo in Titanic was romantic. You know, so this book has got some steamy scenes but nothing too out there you know like steamy as in fog up the car scene that kind of steamy that's what i'm talking about if a book is three of these leos number four would be leo in romeo and juliet because this this boy was in his feelings okay this boy would kill for you he will kill himself for you. He's all up in his feels. And that's what this, that's what that book would mean to me. That That's what that book would have. All the feels, all the, you know, just, ugh. And then we go to Leo level five. And that's the Wolf Wall Street Leo. Because if you've seen that movie, that movie is bat crazy. Okay. He is freaking wild in that book. So that's why I take the level five is, I mean, there's some wild steamy scenes. You're just getting everything in that book. So I hope you enjoyed my Leo scale and that's how it's going to work. So if I'm giving this one a Leo scale, oh, I'm giving it a five. He's getting the Wolf of Wall Street for sure, especially the desk scene. If you know, you know. But let me tell you a little bit about the book now. <laughs> Um, this book follows Jordan and we, it opens up with her on her birthday and she's got a boyfriend named Cole, who's just a deadbeat, just, just, just a deadbeat, you know, we, we, we don't appreciate him at all. So things happen to where they have to move in with Cole's dad named Pike. Enter daddy. Yes, daddy, get it. Okay. There is instant chemistry 
between Jordan and Pike right away, but nothing happens until after um, she and Cole break up. So there's no cheating, anything like that. Um, but honestly, this book was just so good. It was so good. And I cannot wait to read more Penelope Douglas. If you have, let me know down below, which book should I pick up next? I'm thinking Credence or may maybe Punk 57, Bully. I don't know. Let me know down below which one I should definitely pick up next. The last of my recent reads was the one that blew my mind. Blew it, okay? It's one of those ones where I gotta sit and think after the fact. And that is The Push by Ashley Audrain. This was a five freaking star, okay? This book is amazing. It is amazing. And it, it leaves me speechless. It was just that good. Now this book is not for everyone, okay? I am going to list the trigger warnings here for you guys because be forewarned, there is a lot of them. So just take it with a grain of salt going in that this book's not for everybody. Um, this book follows generational abuse, generational child abuse, child neglect, um, just kind of what happens when a mother doesn't bond with their baby when it's born. Just, you know, the argument of nature versus nurture. Can you really, what's more dominant when you're having a baby and it's developing? Is it the nature of just who they are? Is it the nurture that you give them that makes them who they are? It's just, I, I, I love this book. But let me tell you a little bit about the kind of synopsis. So we follow a woman named Blythe and we get to see her relationship with her daughter named Violet. We also get flashbacks of her and her mother and her mother and her grandmother. So we kind of see how it's, it's a circle. It's a pattern that keeps happening from generation to generation to generation. And with Blythe's story, she's like, okay, am I, is this in my head or does my child really is there something really disturbingly wrong with my child? She just does not connect with her daughter at all. Um, she feels no motherly instinct towards her or anything like that. So she desperately wants to feel that. So she ends up having another uh, baby who ends up being a boy and she just uh, she connects with him she loves him you know they have this great bond and then unfortunately this tragic accident happens and from then on she's seeing her daughter in a whole different light I'm not going to say anything I do not want to spoil it um but it's like is she like that um is she not like that? Is it really just the fact that her mom just doesn't, didn't bond with her to the fact to where she's like that just towards her? But honestly, the ending of this book blew my mind. I, I need more, um, like now. I need a sequel. I need to know what happened. Um, but good, good news. Good golly gracious good news. This book is being made into a movie. <laughs> and I'm so excited because I don't mess it up either. Do not mess up this, this book. Do it just exactly how it was in here because I do not need you messing up. It's such a good book. Oh, it was so good. It was just so good. Five stars. Again, if you want to read this, look up the trigger warnings that I put up there. Just because no, there, there's a lot. She's got a lot. But that is all of my recent reads that I have currently read in the past month and a half. I'm pretty sure. I don't even know how I read that month and a half in all honesty. But you know, I'm not going to complain. I just don't even know how I did it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below what are some books you recently have read or books that you're reading now. I would love to know you know, just what you're reading and talk to you guys down below. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, all my social media is linked down below as always, along with my Amazon wish list. If you ever wish to send me anything, you don't have to, no pressure, but it's always down there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. This chair, this mother trucking son of a gun chair. 
I don't know what to do. Because I'm a mover. And I talk with my hands. I have a review on... Okay, so the first recent reads... Uh, nope, I don't like that. Okay. So we were book tweening. Tweening? We were tweening. What the frick is tweening? What is tweening? I don't know. And... I don't know freaking movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. Okay. Ugh. 